Hi, my name's Darren. Welcome to my workshop. Today, I'm going to be using a Festool compound miter saw, the KS120EB, to make a dado joint in a piece of timber so we can join two at 90 degrees like so. Doing your dado cuts on a compound miter saw allows you to use longer pieces of timber than you could on a table saw because, of course, on a table saw, you're limited from blade to fence, whereas here, you're really only limited from blade to wall, and if you're in a big enough area, there's no limit. So you'd be able to do much longer pieces of timber, much bigger framework that way. It's very simple, and uh, this is how it's done. Now, if I was to try and dado my piece of timber against the existing fence, you can see that without passing all the way through, I'm gonna end up with a curved base to my dado and the back of the dado is not going to be cut out. So for that reason, I'm going to put in a little offset fence and all it is is a piece of pine with a couple of holes drilled in it, a 10 mil holes, sorry, 20 mil holes drilled in it that just clamp into place like so, so it doesn't slide around. And what that means then is that uh, our blade will pass all the way through and bite into this one in the process of cutting the dado and therefore cut all the way through our piece of timber, giving us a nice flat bottomed dado. No doubt many of you have seen one of these little kerf makers before. This one I bought off banggood.com, quite cheap and uh, supposed to be quite good. This is actually the first time I've used it, so I embarrass myself on international YouTube. Yay! So the theory is this. You set the kerf or the width of the blade using the red portion and the edge of the grey, and then you set the width of your wood. Oh, I've done that up too tight. There we go. And then you set your width of the wood that you're placing into your dado in here, and then the overall unit gives you two lengths by which you can then cut your wood. You'll notice I've got the saw unplugged from the mains at the moment, and that's because we'll be touching the blade in order to set our kerf maker. Now, to set it up here, holding the blade guard out of the way, holding this and holding something else on the other side of the blade so we can set it, would require me to be holding something in my teeth here. You'd need three hands. So, many mitre saws have a little lock to allow you to lock, lock the saw in the downward position when transporting it. So we're going to use that to our advantage now. So I'm going to pull the saw out here, like so, and then lock it down. And now we've got access to our blade without having to worry about uh, holding it in place. So on the left hand side of the blade here, I'm just going to place a piece of timber hard up against the teeth of the blade. Over on the right hand side of the blade, we're just going to set our kerf of the blade on the jig. So we'll put the grey portion of the jig at that end up against the block of wood. And the red portion here, we adjust for the kerf. Then using the bottom wheel here, we loosen off the grey portion and we set that to the width of the piece that's going in the dado. And tighten that up. And there we go, that's our jig all set. Now we don't want to cut all the way through our piece of timber like you'd normally do on a mitre saw or drop saw. We want to stop. So I'm going to put a spacer in. I'm going to use 20 mil. So we'll have 20 millimeters of wood left. I'm going to put my 20 mil spacer in there. And then around the back of the capex is this knob you can adjust. You flip it forward and then you can adjust the height uh, of that to in turn adjust the depth of cut. So we're going to do that and we're going to set that for our 20 mil spacer. Okay, so I'm just going to flip that forward there. And at the moment you can see it's, it's already got a depth set on it, which is just slightly more than we want. So I'm just going to back that off slightly. There we go. A little bit more. Oh, 
Okay, so that's our depth of cut set. We've got our kerf set up. Down the far end here you can see I've got an end stop set up and we're going to be referencing against that end stop like you would a fence on a table saw. So we're going to make two cuts and then we're going to cut out the rubbish if you like or the waste in between. So the first cut will be made grey to red, the second cut will be made grey to grey. What do I mean by that? Okay, so we're going to use that as our reference here, that's our fence or our end stop. We're going to make a cut like that, then I'm going to slide this forward, I'm going to make another cut there, and then we'll hog out the stuff in between. So here goes. All right, you can see how easy that was. Uh, no fault of the Capex saw, just me getting used to the Kerf Maker. That's ever so slightly loose, so I'm going to have to fine tune the Kerf Maker and get that to be a tighter fit. All right, what I'll do differently this time is I will set the Kerf Maker uh, to the kerf of the blade using a set of calipers instead of pushing up against a block of wood and we'll see if we can take out a bit of the slop that way. I took a pair of calipers and measured one of the teeth. Now the reason I'm measuring one tooth and not across two of them is because I want the dado to be tighter this time and I get 2.52 and using the little bit on the end, the little depth gauge on the end I set the kerf here, like so. There we go, like that. And so then that's that end set. And of course the same as previously, for the other end, it was just a case of setting that to the width of our piece of timber. Like so. But let's see if that helps. So, first cut, red to grey. Ah, unplugged again. Plug it back in. Atomic batteries to power, and here we go. And guess who forgot to put that back in place? Okay, fifty. <laughs> okay, grey to grey. Let's try that. Oh, that's much better. That's much nicer. So our second cut was much more successful. So we made two mistakes in the process and learnt from both of them. Uh, the first mistake I made was setting the dado a little bit too wide. And that happened because when I set the red portion of this gauge, I set it to the width, the full width of the blade. The second time I just measured one tooth and uh, that's just made it a tighter fit and it fits a lot better. Uh, the second mistake I made was forgetting to set the depth of cut again when I went back to use the saw for the second time and made my first cut too deep. Uh, as you can see I was able to set it very easily back to the correct depth of cut again and all the rest of the cuts have gone nice and evenly. Hopefully that's been of some help. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.